So here we will talk about A50 filtering. Why the name is such? Basically, A50 is used to compute the signal spectrum, and the filtering is directly done in the spectrum domain itself. That's why. So in the first code sections, we are importing all the necessary libraries. So then we are generating this particular signal. Fine. So this is the method or function which will generate a signal of combination of two sinusoids. One frequency is one hertz. Another frequency is 10 hertz. And uh, randomness is basically optional. If you just uh, pass the associated flags, the signal will add it to the random signal. Otherwise, it would be a it would return a clean sinusoidal combinations. Okay. So as you can see that uh, F1 is a 1 hertz, F2 is a F2 is a 10 hertz signals, and 1 hertz signal amplitude is 2, while 10 hertz signal amplitude is 4. So if uh, noise flag is true, that means the signal will return as a noisy one, right? What kind of noise we are adding? Gaussian noise. Now there are some parameters we have to select. The sampling frequency we select as a 40 hertz because the highest frequency present in the signal is basically 10. So 40 hertz is sufficient enough to avoid aliasing. Del F is the frequency resolution which we set to 0.078. You can set your own choice here as well. Capital N is the number of DFT points which will support this particular resolution of the frequency at 40 hertz sampling rate, right? So it is essentially an integer number. So that's why in in, uh, that means the ratio has been converted to integer types right then TW is the signal duration which would be achieved by the ratio of N and FS so now T is the time vector it is basically generating a series of numbers equally spaced numbers N number of numbers between 0 to TW that means the signal durations now this particular line generating the signal and uh, the signal contains a numpy array and the generate signal if we just go back t is the time vector and this particular flag is basically false that means we are uh, we, we are not adding the noise here right so only it is returning the clean sig uh, clean sinusoidal parts only this part portion will execute and return the value of x so it is uh, generating the clean sinusoidal combination let me run this particular part okay generated now this particular section is essentially computing the spectrum part what it does line number one it computes the spectrum of the signal line number two it com it computes the frequency values from minus 20 hertz to plus 20 hertz uh, because uh, 0 to 20 hertz is the fundamental range so it would also return the negative range also that's why minus 20 to plus 20 hertz so now if positive so we are only collecting we are collecting the index where the values of f are positive sections only right so only we are interested about 0 to 20 hertz that's why a positive are collecting the index for which a value remains within a, within a range of 0 to 20 hertz so if we run this section that's okay now we are plotting the signal and the corresponding spectrum so this is time domain signal looks and this is the spectrum domain there are clearly two spikes one is at 1 hertz another is at 10 hertz 10 hertz spike is uh, more higher than 1 hertz because 10 hertz signal signals sinusoidal signals amplitude is higher than 1 hertz signals right so now frequency domain filtering how it is being performed so what we are doing we are taking a threshold frequency value as 5 and anything beyond this 5 frequency that means 5 to 20 hertz and minus 5 to minus 20 hertz both the sections of component we are suppressing to 0 and we will keep exactly the same between 0 to 5 hertz and 0 to minus 5 hertz so that's why this is basically the spectrum filter that spectrum filter means it is a spectrum of the filtered output where we are only considering the spectrum same from minus or minus 5 hertz to plus 5 hertz and spectrum from 5 hertz to 20 hertz and minus 5 hertz to minus 20 hertz are suppressed to zero so now uh, ia50 is computing the signal itself from the processed spectrum so that's why this is called signal filter now signal filter spectrum again being computed by using a50 instructions and holds the spectrum 
within a variable spectrum output so if we execute this particular section now if we just go for plotting we will see all the signals right so blue curve is the input signals whose spectrum is uh, upper upper blue one right it is a fundamental range it has two spikes 1 and 10 so this particular spectrum has been processed that means we suppress all the component from 5 to 10 5 to sorry 5 to 20 that's why 5 to 20 all these things are zeros but between 0 to 5 the spectrum as it is hold the same uh, same values which was there in the original spectrum okay so the red curve is the signal which is associated to the spectrum which is shown in the bottom spectrum okay so now if we just uh, use this one as true that means we are using sinusoidal signals with a combination of the Gaussian noise computing the spectrums then plotting this particular noisy signal and spectrum it takes a different form so these are unwanted spikes unwanted ripples these are due to the Gaussian noise parts right but it's too strong spiky components are associated for 1 hertz and 10 hertz still remaining there now we are doing the same kind of spectral domain filtering and then plotting these particular sections we'll see how it looks so the signal still being noisy because some of the noise components along with the 1 hertz component strongly present now if you use this threshold to be 2 that means I'm reducing a little bit more from 5 to 2 that means the less amount of noisy part is there passing through that's why the red curve will become to be more smoother let's see what happened yes red curve is becoming more smoother because less amount of Gaussian noise is basically passing through it right so this is basically the FFT filtering technique so the concept is once a signal is given you compute the signal spectrum and uh, according to your own expected output or own expected um, filtering techniques you suppress the specific amount of frequency component and reconstruct or revert back from spectral domain to time domain the signal itself and that would be your filtered output